map out. And the one thing I would say about Purple's lineup is it's a bit more aggressive than most lineups. A lot of lineups, they want to go with maybe a control deck in there somehow. Purple has uh, opted to treat his Odd Rogue as a control deck, essentially. And Odd Rogue does have some great matchups against aggro decks like Zulok, but it will struggle against other Paladins. And for Shoebox, I'm not quite sure what the... Uh, exact lineups are, but if it's like Shutterwalk Shaman, it's going to be a control killer, which will struggle quite a bit. But the Odd Paladin overall does look like it's going to have a pretty good time in this deck. Purple. Oh, uh, so it looks like Shoebox has opted to go for that Even Paladin. Even Paladin is one of the decks that a lot of players in the tournament have opted to bring over Odd Paladin because they feel it has better matchups against other aggressive decks, and it's a very neutral all around deck. It reminds me a lot of either even Shaman or even Warlock, mm -hmm. as it's very consistent in what it does, and it does it very well. Yeah, the, having those even decks does give you that consistency right from the start, of course. But this deck has a lot of options. It's, it's pretty aggressive, but obviously, as you can see, with the qualities and consecrations, etc., the deck does have options to go into a slightly later game than, than some would as well. The likes of Tarim can help you out in the mid-game, so... It sort of rumbles along, a bit like you said, a bit like that even Shaman that can just not go away. Yeah, it does what it does very consistently. Looks like Shoebox is going to opt for a full keep, has the two drop to go along on turn two, we does have, have the Consecrate later on with the equality. Uh, I'm not no, too familiar with this exact by. matchup. Even Paladin's one of those decks that has kind of resurfaced recently, and I think one of the major reasons it does fairly well on ladder is that it's strong against Druid, surprisingly, because you don't go as wide as traditional Paladin decks do. You more so go tall on one minion with something like a Corpse Taker with Blessings of Kings, and then you're pushing 14 damage and the game's over and you've blinked and you're on to the next ladder game. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm always a little bit suspicious of decks that suddenly rise to prominence on ladder with no mm. real meta change because a lot of that can be in the mulligan. A lot of the people play mulligan for odd paladin, they walk into an even paladin, whoops, unlucky. <laughs> um, and so I, I tend to find these decks get a little bit overrated at first. You've got to be careful because, you know, Token Druid was one of those decks once and now it's a really good deck. But sometimes you just find the decks aren't as good as you think they are. Yeah, I'm definitely not the firmest believer in the even Paladin, but you know, it has put up some surprising results in the past. I believe players have, getting, have been getting to higher ranks of legend with it. Now, Shoebox opted to coin out the Amani of Berserker earlier. Uh, I wasn't too keen on it. I understand the pressure concept behind it, but it, you know, Purple for the most part is just going to dagger next turn, and you're essentially giving Purple just a free kill on a two drop where you could save yeah. that coin for something later on with the Wild Pyromancer that you had just picked up. Or potentially, if you draw something like this Corpse Taker, you could coin that out. Uh, but it's definitely uh, just a very hard decision, because it appears that Shoebox wanted to get the two-drop down now in order to make sure he had a two-drop on an uncontested board. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense, but the punish is picking up that Corpse Taker, which is the cornerstone of the entire deck. He could have played that on turn three now, and that's what he's given up. Again, Purple wasn't menacing last turn. He wouldn't have been able to do anything. So, interesting to see how this works out for Shoebox. We'll keep an eye on how that Corpse Taker coming down a turn late turns out for him. Yeah, Purple's just going to go ahead and take it slow, play out that Tar Creeper. With the Tar Creeper, he'll be able to bump and then go uh, Flame Elemental SI7 Agent. He's going to hold on to his dagger. There's no real reason to swing the dagger quite yet, especially when on turn five, he has to make sure he has that dagger up for that Captain Green skin. Yeah, we've seen more and more as the years gone by. Um, the way that Odd Rogue in particular has been played by the best players is slower and slower than any of your ladder opponents. They People really do just take their time with this deck. Now, I saw a match where Saiyan literally just kept Baku forever. Like, I'm going to play to my turn nine play. Right from turn one, he's like, how do I get this into play? How do I not have a wasted card? I know. I'll make my seven, eight on turn nine relevant. And that's just not how your brain naturally looks at this deck. You want to no, hit people in the face. I'm just playing a one drop and hit him in the face. But you're exactly right. A lot of times it separates, you know, great players from some of the best. It's just the fact that they sit there, they take their time, and a lot of the decisions in the early game matter the most. Because with Odd Rogue, you're not going to have too many decisions later on. You're going to be dumping your hand earlier on, and once you get to those later stages of the game you don't really have as many resources, you don't have as many choices unless you have a Myra's Unstable Element. But every decision, turns one through five, are going to matter drastically. 
How do you even feel about that getting the, the Crystal Smith down this early when you're on 30 health? Is that is that a thing you needed to do to occupy the board? It's not really a threat. Uh, when well, you could say maybe to get a bit of health back later on. I, it's definitely a hard argument there. You could get health back later on, but one of the major issues with that is you need to contest the board somehow. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, you take damage in the early game with, say, minions or other, uh, like, the rogue weapon. But if you play the Crystal Smith now, you're kind of negating some of that damage early on that yep. you would heal later. So yep. you're doing the job earlier on rather than later on. Yeah, that was just asking because that was part of that coin philosophy. This was one of the minions he was going to get down with it. It's like, eh, it's not the not biggest the most of minions. impactful minion. I have Let definitely me. seen more impactful two drops. But again, every, every point of attack and health can matter massively on board in the early game. Oh, fungal dude. <laughs> fungal, fungal man, sir. <laughs> I love that card. That card. I remember where there's a point where people just didn't play that card. Yeah, I mean, why would you? Oh yeah, because it's really good. <laughs> I remember now. So I like this a little bit more while having the dagger. I just kind of want to make sure you get maximum utilization out of it. To be fair, Defender of Argus was a thing that there weren't so many taunts at some points in Hearthstone's history, so taunt was a lot more relevant as a part of the buff. Whereas now it's just a thing that happens. You find a way to get taunt in your deck naturally. Shoebox does not look happy right now. He is, uh, right now he's dedicated his turn to Hero Power Pass. And that does not feel good when you have five mana. This goes back to turn one. This is the, the turn one punish if you like. He hasn't managed to get the board out of his early coin and now he's sitting there wishing he had either had a coin or the board or something. And here's where it's going to play an important factor to see how much Purple decides to trade into minions. Last turn he did put quite a bit of damage into minions. I believe that was just a nod to Blessings of Kings. He just didn't want to get punished by that card too much. He's also got a lot of burst damage in his hand. And with Myra's, he's going to have the refill that he can just dump his hand. Purple has to tread a thin line of maximizing his resources and pushing as much damage as possible before something like Equality Consecrate, yeah. Equality Avenging Wrath comes down and then kind of negates his board state. Yeah, this is the green light though to start dumping stuff because you've got the Myras in hand. Um, Purple will be considering that because he is so far ahead, whether he feels the need to even play to that Myras this early. Um, if he was anywhere even a level board state, he would just go crazy here. But I do wonder if his, his thought process is, okay, I'm so far ahead, maybe I don't even need to do that, the normal play. I actually like this from Purple, just taking it slow. I don't exactly see any kind of reason to commit anything to the board that's not necessary. With this play, Purple sets up so much damage on the following turn. He forces an Equality Consecrate, and then even if there's no Equality Consecrate, he wins the game. Yeah, and Equality Consecrate takes your whole turn. Purple will have another card. He'll have Firefly into the Flame Elemental, into the Fungal Monsters of exactly. Reload, and he off realized, you go again! Yes, he realized with his mana that the next turn would be set up perfectly for this, and there's no strong way of even Paladin dealing with it unless they have, say, another combination of cards. However, Purple will have to get through a uh, Spike-Bridged Dude. He will, and currently doesn't have a way of blowing that up, but there's plenty of ways available in the deck when he does play this Myra's. Spike Ridge Dude. Spike Ridge Dude. Got to feel a little bit for Shoebox, like assuming he is what we're assuming he is, which is you know, a convention visitor or an enthusiastic Hearthstone player. Um, you, you sort of plan your day out in your head, you know, get there, maybe win a couple of rounds, bump into a pro, maybe <laughs> maybe play against a name player, and then... No, that's not how it works around here. Unlucky. Miranda. Get on stream. Round one on stream. <laughs> it's not purple. how you plan your day, is it, at all? The last thing he expected this morning would be to be on stream in round one. <laughs> and that's a lot to cope with. That is a lot to deal with. You, you, it's a lot kind of, of like a nightmare. You just wake up in the middle <laughs> of the night sweating. You're like, oh, gosh. A lot I of people struggle, right? Stream. They just don't want to have their... I mean, he's doing well, actually. He's, he's even looking pretty of, calm. But. Even some of very consistent players just, you know, they just don't like to be on stream. You know, yeah. it's a duly added pressure that most players don't have to deal with. But I do think it's a necessary skill. It's also a great thing, you know, you, as Purple picks up the Vile Spine Slayer. Um, it's something <laughs> you can go home from the event, win or lose, and say, it's a thing you have done. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. 
Straightforward enough turn for Purple here. Not quite lethal just yet, but uh, yeah. I think that's just about the icing on the cake. Even if Tyrion comes down, he'll be able to kill through that. Serenite Chain Gang Blessings of Kings. That might be slightly enough. If only you could sort of play the Serenite and then before the second one appeared, just get the blessing on the first one quick. So you get two, six, seven. <laughs> exactly. A, can I, can I put this Blessings of Kings on my Serenite before I play it? <laughs> and I actually don't think that will be enough because Purple can just go ahead and put the Fungal Mancer, one of the three fours, his face, and then the other three four. And that would be lethal damage even if the Serenite Chain Gang plus the Blessings of Kings would come out. So as it looks right now, Purple's going to take game number one. Yep, put Mookla in your road. It makes all the difference. I hope he draws Mookla here. I wouldn't be surprised if Purple's the player to uh, play the Myras. Look at look at Purple doing the math on his finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he doesn't even need to do the math. That elite probably will uh, doesn't make the runs get gets done. Need fingers for this one. Oh come on, Purple! You got to level up your road. Oh, this is serious, Purple. Serious purple mode. Yeah, purple is very serious there. Typically, uh, you know, I expect him to be kind of joking around. Yeah, him. it's good to see a serious purple. Serious purple is um, a Terry who didn't know who he was going into the year so well. It hasn't stuck as much as with some of the others. Game number two. Oh, no, now I've got to listen to Dr. J talk about this deck. Oh, my favorite, the Shutterwalk Shaman. Unfortunately for Shoebox here, if his best counter cue right now is yeah. the Shutterwalk Shaman, it's not exactly looking the greatest right now. I think Shutterwalk Shaman used to be favored in this matchup, but what happened is Myra's the unstable element got introduced as a card, and Shutterwalk Shaman just can't deal with that. What would happen a lot of times is both players would go to the fatigue state, or not fatigue, but they would both start running out of resources, yeah. and typically Shutterwalk Shaman has a higher end to draw for. So you'll be drawing like Shutterwalk, you'll be drawing like Rumble, you'll be drawing much more impactful things and you have the heal to get out of the range of any kind of burst damage. Whereas Odd Rogue will be drawing Fireflies and Dire Moles and maybe the occasional Hench Clan Thug if they're lucky. Uh, but with Myra's Unstable Element, you kind of throw all of that out the window. You say everything you knew about this matchup, just throw it out the window. So how do you feel about, um, obviously it's a big deal, how big a deal is this turn two Keleseth going to be here for Shoebox? Is it going to be a big difference or does it not really matter? It feels like it matters quite a lot. Well, I've heard rumors that a turn two Keliseth uh, often calls upon prophecies to summon a uh, on four chain gang. So <laughs> with that, I, I think it's a huge difference. I mean, obviously having Prince Keliseth in any kind of matchup will just increase the win percentage by quite a bit. And I think this one especially because it makes minions more awkward to clear. For instance, this SI7 agent, if it were to come down uh, eventually and a Serenite Chain Gang is drawn, well, the Serenite Chain Gang just eats it up instead of taking a value trade. While we were talking, the big deal of the tournament, the Mookla has oh, come there to play. He is. We're going to see a lot of him if we see a lot of purple. Oh, why? Just going to be a 4 4 Keliseth? That doesn't matter. It would have been fine, purple. Yeah, purple obviously <laughs> clearing the way for. For the monk, he's got the he's got so much good stuff going on in his hand. He's in no hurry at all, of course. This is another very important turn for Shoebox here. He could opt to go for some kind of draw effect, where he gets down, say, the Acolyte of Pain, maybe try and force a trade out the SI7, or play the Mana Tide Totem in order to guarantee a draw through just that turn. Maybe get two ones, uh, two draws if Purple decides to ignore it, or he could opt to just play out the Mind Control Tech now. I don't mind the mind control tech now because the only extreme punish to it would be something like dagger cold blood. That would be quite the punish to it, but that would mean mm -hmm. purple's not developing a three drop on top of he is contesting the immediate board state. One thing I like about not playing it though is I think this hand, like next turn you can glacial shard and mana tide and give purple things to hit that he needs to remove. And maybe you can, you know, just bait him into getting that fourth minion down. Normally, I agree, you just you ignore that part down, and I uh, the mind control and just challenge board. But just because of this exact hand shoebox has, I do feel that maybe he can stodge it up enough to make the MC Tech actually get more value than usual. That's definitely fair. I mean, MC Tech is not the most powerful in this matchup. A lot of times they won't go that wide on the board. You were right about the summoning, by I the way. I told you. You did warn me. Prophecies foretell that if you play Chain Gang on, or if you play uh, Prince Keliseth on two, 
you will have Chain Gang on four. Prophecies are usually correct. That's why they call them prophecies. What would they call if they weren't oh, correct? Like, fallacies or something. Uh, fallacies? <laughs> fallacies. <laughs> nice. Is that an actual word? I knew those are reason I like working <laughs> with you. Although I'm not quite sure I like the Serenite Chain Gang that turn. There was some potential to think about, say, Lightning Storm plus the Glacial Shard that turn. I think this this works with that Lightning Storm, though. I think is how he's thinking here, because he's expecting the Mookla oh, to trade into one of these. That is fair. And then maybe Purple will feel the need to put more to the board, and then actually the Lightning Storm could get a lot done in one go. He hasn't got a very defensive hand. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, turn, because if you do decide to go with the Glacial Shard plus the Lightning Storm, what will end up happening is Purple is kind of forced to dagger down the Glacial Shard mm. because he's given the Bananas to Shoebox, and it will put the Mukla at worst case scenario to three health, and it would only take one banana to clear up the Mukla with the Glacial Shard, and then you could do just, you know, banana hero power, and you kind of have the MC tech for later on. So it's definitely something to consider. If you go for this Serenite Chain Gang line of play, you give them a free kill with the minions that were currently on board, while also giving Purple time to develop. I think this was like, a pretty good case for Shoebox here. It worked out for him pretty well. But this uh, King Mukla is a 5-5. And speaking of Serenite Chain <laughs> Gangs, apparently um, deciphered in the hieroglyphics, there were two. Yep. By two, I mean four. Yeah, because you get two, lots of two, which I think is four. Shoebox, uh, sorry, Purple there did play around all of the threats really nicely. The, the MC Tech and the Lightning Storm, of which we spoke, Purple's having none of that. So I think that's one of the... Obviously, that's not that hard a play, but something that Purple is super good at is just knowing, just never, ever walking into that sort of thing. You don't see him walk into cheap tricks basically ever in this game. That's a very strong play coming out from Shoebox here. This is one of the starts that Shutterwalk Shaman will need in order to have a chance in this matchup. Just, you know, the Prince Keleseth on yeah. two into having both of the Serenite chain gangs. And uh, <laughs> Purple's <laughs> clapping at his own good fortune. He's like, yeah, I drew the Vile Spine on Curve again. <laughs> well done, me. Purple's just trying to navigate this. He's like, all right, so if I concede now, what game do I kill? What, what deck do I kill oh, next? Oh, Purple and the Concedes have. He has been known to do some really early Concedes in the past. But I think this one he was, he was applauding himself for, for just breaking Shoebox next turn. <laughs> He doesn't sort of... Purple always feels embarrassed when he's winning, almost. I think so. That's the impression I get. He loves it. He likes to win. Don't get me wrong. He loves winning. But he does sort of sometimes give that vibe of being a bit embarrassed about the fact that he won, even when it's his own skill that does it. <laughs> Shoebox has a couple interesting decisions here. The Hex I, I would like to be used later on. He could go for a line of play where he decides to clear off the King Mooklo, the two minions on board. He gets a Mana Tide down, fits in a Hero Power, and then can even Earth Shock the Hench Clan Thug as to make sure he doesn't keep taking that repetitive damage. Looks like, you know, he's going for another line of play where he just commits the Storm. I actually really like this now that I've seen it. Guarantee the kill on both minions, get the Mana Tide Totem down and you still have flexible mana for next turn. I think this is a really good spot from Shoebox. Yeah, because he has got to start working. I mean, the combo isn't much in this, but at least getting a Shutterwalk and getting some more minions is something he's going to need to do, because the Onslaught is going to keep coming, especially if Myra's is picked up. Um, and so, yeah, Shoebox still working towards getting as much going on as possible. And he is quite away in front here, I feel. He's, he's not taking much that. damage. He's pulling away. I think Purple needs to draw Myra's Unstable Element very quickly. If you are Shoebox here, I really want to. I really would like to see Shoebox set up the Hagatha for next turn. The question Shoebox is going to have to ask himself is, what is the best way to set up the Hagatha? I wonder if he's just going to go all in on this mana type, make it a 3-6 and force Purple to put everything into it. That seems pretty good to me. I like 3-6 mana tide totems. Would you play a three mana, three six mana? It, it dies totem? kind of easily, but yes, I would play that card. It dies kind of easily to the board, but I mean, it forces everything though. And Purple's not going to be happy with a three one just chilling on the board. He's going to have to commit more. <laughs> if he's got more, we can see he's running out of stuff. 
But she looks happy to make a totem. That gives him more options for his bananas. Shoebox definitely has like a plethora of different options he could go for. Pickup of the SI7 agent is going to mean that he will be able to clear up that Manatai totem with the Firefly, the SI7, and the Dagger. I think Purple's going to want to keep this Vile Spine at four health as he knows what's right around the corner. <clears throat> the trouble you is that know what play. happens with Shaman when you have eight mana. Yeah, he knows there's an MC tech. He knows there might be a uh, Hagatha as well. He so. knows there's two bananas. He may just choose to not do much, or he may feel that I'm at that point now, yeah. I'm at that point now where if he has cards, I yeah, lose the game. So let's hope he hasn't got cards. Yeah, Purple's relying on not only getting Myra's unstable element, but saying, you know what? This is my last kind of board state. Deal with it. And Shoebox is going to say, okay. okay, I'm going to deal with it. Look How many this. nanoseconds before Purple hits Concede after this? Will he see his next card? I think he'll see his next card, because if he does draw Myra's Unstable Element, there is a very strong chance. But it does look like Purple just hovered over the Concede button right there. <laughs> I saw him fidget down <laughs> to, the, to where the escape bar on the keyboard would be. <laughs> oh, Shoebox, don't do Purple like this. I mean, yeah, Shoebox is doing a good job, actually, of taking his time over every play. I do agree. I've been impressed with that, settling himself down, and he seems decent. I mean, Quite happy with how Shoebox is progressing today. I do like to see that from players, you know, just take your time. You've, you're allocated the full time for a reason. But uh, it's just funny because I know, yeah, I, know that I know that frustrates Purple because Purple's just like, all right, come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah, anyone who's watched Purple stream or play or anything, he, he <laughs> likes to get on with his Hearthstone because he processes things so quickly. Like when I'm talking to him, I'm just like, hey, way, whoa, just, just speak yeah, let's slow it just down for a little second. Bit. And then let's, he says uh, the same to me appeal to the audience at home. <laughs> I would like to see the Urshak come out onto the 3 one Vile Spine. Definitely think you want to make sure you don't take that much damage with the Healing Rain picked up. Shoebox can yeah. kind of do almost anything he wants as long as Purple doesn't find that Myra's unstable element. Need to see that Mind Control tech played soon as well. Get that Battle Cry into the Shudder Walk. It's not going to be relevant for any time soon. Might as well just get on the board yeah, as a 4-4 four, four body. Get a minion down there. I don't mind seeing that, you know, see the spell you get. I think he was right to hold it a little bit longer than usual, but I think That's now fair. is the time to get this massive minion on the board for very little money. It is a 4-4, so Will can test that other Vile Spine. It's easy to sort of think at the start of the game, oh, I'm going to reserve this MC Tech for this situation, and then forget to change your plan when, when the situation changes, which it has, because Purple's just not playing those minions. Yeah, I like this. It's not hard, but I'm glad to see it, is what I mean. Yeah, just have it. I really like to see him. Uh, now Earthshot the 3-1 because that's going to preserve so much damage. I would like to see that. I don't think it's going to matter in the long run. Uh, Shoebox kind of yeah. is in the driver's seat right now. But you don't want to take unnecessary damage. For Especially with these big minions. Damage. They, they would have just been quite difficult to deal with. And you'd actually be starting to win some sort of race as well. Okay, so I definitely think Hex is coming out. I definitely think there's going to be some trades. I would like to see the healing rank come out first. I don't think you really value the health on minions. Sure. Your shoebox here, you kind of just do what you want. Yeah, as long as you hex the big minion that's in the way, you can do whatever you like. <laughs> as long as you, as long as you stop the only thing on the board that could potentially end your life, I think you're good. Yeah, why not? Put the life drink on the board. I like it. Is there any combination he can lose to here? Not quite, but. Yeah, so Cold Bloods and Leroy's and Myra's, I, I think. Both Cold Bloods are gone. So, yeah, so that's good. I think the only uh, outside burst damage would be the Deadly Poisons. And this is how the matchup traditionally went in the past. For instance, Purple has not drawn Myra's Unstable Element, and we can see here yeah. the Shaman is just dominating. I mean, I mean it did it have did. a pretty good way to do all of its minions and none of its combo, basically, so that was good for <laughs> it. That always helped. Ooh, Void Ripper. That'll do nothing. Too sick, Leroy. No, it'll do nothing. I think I've accidentally done that before. Where I had a I had a <laughs> weird, obscure lethal that I needed to use the Leroy, but I needed a Void Ripper as well, but I played the Leroy first. And then I had Void Ripper. <laughs> I was like, why why didn't my opponent die here? And then I was like, oh. 
I miss the old knife juggler days when Lee always used to come in and just get juggled <laughs> down. <laughs> He'd be like, oh no. You might be able to see that this weekend. You know, there's a lot of even shaman and a lot of odd decks. There's some weird stuff here as well. There's a bit more priest than That's you'd That's why I'm expect. excited. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think, you know, as crazy as it sounds, you know, the format's been going on for quite some time. It is getting to that kind of stale point where most of the decks have been solidified. But even then, we're seeing even powder and resurface. I think almost because shaman. of that stabilization, what you're talking about is happening is that people Making have... players go crazy. It's... <laughs> they start putting King Mooklin on all four of their decks. It's like it's so stable, it's predictable. And when that happens, you can start to actually... Monkey around. something about it. Go bananas. Are you going to stop? Go back to your primal instincts. <laughs> you're not going to stop, are you? I'm not going to stop. Nine rounds of Swiss with Dr. J talking about bananas, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Luckily, I won't be here for all of those rounds. I'm gonna let Admiral try and take you on later. He can he can out monkey you, I'm sure. So this is an interesting mulligan from Shoebox. I almost wouldn't be opposed to see Shoebox keep the Shutterwalk, keep the Grumble, and the Chain Gang. As crazy as that sounds, it's a very strange mulligan. But the reason I say that is a lot of times against Hunter, the way you win is by making sure you get to your combo as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So if you get to your combo essentially in your starting hand, you kind of just hope your hand fills out to the point right. where you kind of deal with the early stages, and then you just shutter walk on nine and win the game. Yeah, we've seen how the hand can develop quite rapidly last game, like just from the top of your yes. deck. So yeah, keeping that combo does make sense. Eh, here's Kalisa. Now I see why he mulliganed them away. Shoebox is a Prince Kalisa gamer, and I'm loving it. You know who's not loving it? It's purple. Purple. Purple is not loving it. Purple is... All eyes on purple it. for what particular sarcastic reply we get this time <laughs> when it comes down on two. Raise of an eyebrow, I think. Most likely. I'm, I'm very excited to see purple's expression with this Prince Kalisica. That's what I love about purple is how expressive he yes. is. Sometimes it's... Sometimes it can be over the top, but, you know, I'd rather see over the top than nothing at all. And it's never malicious. It's always... It can be sarcastic and upset, yeah, but it's course. never, ever nasty. No, purple after every game is just... Well done, dude. Whatever, yeah. A gentleman to his opponent, exactly. Yeah. It's just in the moment he's like, all right, thanks, Harston. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. You taught me last game this is a good Hearthstone card. I'm going to put it in some of my decks later. Candle shot, yeah. It's a good Hearthstone card. This one, an even better Hearthstone card. <laughs> slight. <laughs> it's a slight yeah. hurt. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> nice, yep, well done. The puppy dog lips won't help you purple. That, Keleseth has already done its battle cry. And not going to mess around waiting for Death Rath Effect. Just going to challenge this board before it gets out of control. Can even Zola it. <laughs> oh. Please, Shoebox, please. I think that was... The one time I've ever seen Kibler get upset in tweets was when he got his... He just lost to somebody who Kelesethed him to, like, the nth degree by about turn five. He's like, what's this doing? My favorite convoluted situation is sometimes you'll come into a game where you don't have Life Drinker in the pool, but you have the Shutter Walks, and you just constantly play the Shutter Walks to try and get some of them on the board, but you have Prince Keleseth in the pool, <laughs> and next thing you know, you're drawing, like, 1821 Mana Tide Totems. And of course, you have to play the 1821 Mana Tide Totem yeah, because it's an 1821 Mana Tide Totem. Yeah, but I mean, you need that extra card, right? Exactly, that too. And then you kill him with an 1821 <laughs> Mana Tide Totem. Wow. It actually happens more often than you think. Yeah, it does, especially if you go for it. We're going to see crazy stuff. I mean, Purple's having a laugh about it now. We are going to see some crazy stuff in this game. I think Purple's just kind of hoping that this cube play works out for him. He's going to have to stick to Grizzly. The Grizzly is going to have to uh, fend off the entire Shutterwalk family. And then it's going to have to get cubed and carry the entire team. It's a lot to ask for from a poor old Grizzly. Yeah, Purple just deciding that there's no point trading around here. Just getting that damage in while he can. He's got a long way to go here, though. I don't think you quite need the extra Keleseth buff just yet. I wouldn't be opposed to see Shoebox. Put one of the bumps into the Terra Scale Stalker. Trade off into the Spider Bomb. Yep. Just play a Serenite Chain Gang. Seems good. Seems good to me. Save the Hex. No real reason to commit too much to the board state. Lots of options here for him, though, and that's why it's, again, good to see him taking his time. He's unlikely been on stream before. Again, I keep assuming he may have come from other games or something. That's the thing that sometimes happens, and players are actually more confident than you feel. But 
Or maybe he's just the future dream hack Atlanta yeah. champion. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. I'll start with this first game. I really like this. You know, might as well put the bump in. There's no reason to get the two face damage. You're going to inevitably win the game with Shutterwalk later on. Question is, ooh, do you get that juicy buff down now? Or do you go for the Serenite chain game? This yeah, I, I quite like your play here. Um... I like being mana efficient. I think uh, that's a lot of times what, you know, decides yeah. games is that mana efficiency. For instance, you play the Serenite Chain Gang that turn. Next turn, you can go potentially Acolyte Pain plus the Prince Keliseth. But when you draw that, throw everything out the window. Yeah. Yeah, shut up, Dr. J. Let Shoebox <laughs> do his thing. <laughs> and here, here's a turn where I think Shoebox, I would have liked to have seen him think just a little bit more. Because although Hex doesn't seem appealing on the 3-5, there is some strong consideration for it because cube play dead is right around the corner and with cube play dead the three one can also be traded off there was some merit to actually freezing the terror scale stalker to make sure mind control tech was viable next turn right yeah i've seen that done more often than, than you'd think is freeze the smaller minion and this could turn around really quickly in purple's favor if he's not careful, because obviously that, that Rexar pickup while we were talking about shoebox is a big, big deal for clearing stuff up. And it's also meant that um, the double killer set's making more difference on these glacial shards. But... Also has the grumble to bounce them back. And <laughs> it can replay killer set again. It's disgusting. <laughs> Just keep buffing the deck up, why not? Yeah, who needs combos when we have... What is it, 1821s you're talking about? 1821 Mana Tide Totem. Don't wow. forget the Mana Tide Totem. That's the most important part. So you can draw more 1821 Mana Tide Totems. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, does Shoebox telegraph the Mind Control tech by not swinging into this froggy? Yeah. That's what he's going to do. That's not going to work. I mean, to be honest, I don't blame him. I like it. You might as well make sure that, you know, yep. Purple is terrified to play anything else. Now, the Carnivorous Cube is an exception. We'll be able to eat the Grizzly and play around it, but I kind of like that from Shoebox. No reason to kill off that frog. Really wants to make sure that Mana Tide... Uh, I'm, I'm saying Mana Tide for everything now. <laughs> wants to make sure that yeah, I was still getting Mana Tide tech, tech earlier as well, I think. <laughs> it's the heat in Atlanta getting to us. It's hot Lana. Hot Lana. <laughs> For those who don't realize, Nathan's kind of admirable is a bit sad because he likes the hot and Atlanta's kind of chilly today. No, it's still hot. It's still hot. It's hot heart. for me. I think this is an easy grumble turn. Might as well get on the board. Can go ahead and refreeze uh, 312 in the middle. Yeah, nothing else looks like it works mana wise. Not really. Um, you could kill the weapon if you want to protect your 4 1 or get some 4 1 damage stuff, but. You just run it into a minion anyway, that protects it pretty well. Looks like Shoebox is really still thinking about leaving this froggy up on the board. Almost like yeah, it's not running as a threat, you're right, he's actually clogging purple up. As long as he has things to do himself, which he does, then, then why not? I don't think he's too worried about taking three damage a turn. He does have the Hagatha to try and find refill, and then we'll be able to just keep drawing through the deck. Ooh. Mukla. That is a Katharina Winter Wisp that could pull a Mukla. three mana 5-5. Five five. <laughs> Let's see it. And your opponent doesn't get the bananas. Boom. King Mukla hits the board. I don't know why I was so excited for that. I was looking forward to that. So I think Korva I think everyone was talking. Nicely. Everyone was joking with Purple about how that was like a strong possibility and how I just love that the first game, the first round of Swiss, it comes up. Yeah, yeah, live in front of all the viewers and in front of Shoebox. <laughs> I mean, it's a big, it's still a down beast. Shoebox. It is still a 5-5. Five five. It's well, not way, bad. The way Purple rationalizes it is, in most matchups, it's almost the same thing as high main a lot of the times. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a lot of the times, high main doesn't get dealt with. It only has one less stat. It can come down turns earlier to contest other aggressive decks. And it just destroys Druid <laughs> on its and own. it's a monkey. Yeah, he's got bigger than size 11 feet oh, as well. Shoe box. Oh, shoebox. What do you get? Oh, he gets the 312. I think, I think that's pretty solid. I think that's actually the best one. I don't know if the Katharina would have been better, 
but uh, definitely having a 312, I think, was at least, if not the best, the second best. <laughs> Imagine if he'd stolen the Mookla and then Purple would be like, that's why it's in the deck. Because uh, exactly. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. Take it. You can have it back. <laughs> I'm never putting King Mookla in my lineups again. But this is where Shoebox is going to have it to do over the next few turns. This is where it's starting to just turn against him. And it served him well, the mulligan he took, but this is where we see the decision that you were going to go with, sort of get that combo early. Would he have survived this far? Maybe not. So he's had the majority of the cards for the combo. The only thing he's missing right now is Shutterwalk. So if you imagine if he had the Shutterwalk in his hand, he could honestly just tempo it out, take a minion, yeah. summon another copy, and then hopefully find something later on. He needs it really soon, though. Like, now would be good. Like, yesterday is when he needed it. Um, looking for the volcano here. Think it's okay, but with the cube on the board, it's not that okay because that's how cubes work. <laughs> I think more so, Shoebox is going to be looking at this Hagatha. Can play the Hagatha, put the mind control tech into the 3 4, and then trade into two minions, only leaving the cube up. Yeah, seems good. Kind of have to hope that there's no second play dead or second terror scale stalker, and then maybe get a hex off of the Acolyte of Pain or the second one naturally in the deck. Notice how Purple here has been understanding as well the, the very big importance of the tempo in this. He hasn't been messing around building beats and stuff. He's just been you know, getting his, his actual cards onto the board. Why not? It's not a value-based game. It's, can I kill them? You get the value when your work is done. So this is definitely very interesting to me. I don't quite get what box is going for here. It looks like he's going for some kind of volcano math. Did he do all the math out to figure out that that would be exact? He did start counting really early on in his turn for volcano. That was an insane volcano turn that I didn't see. I don't think it quite worked out how he thought as well. He's looking a little bit, he's, he's scrunching his face up as if to say, whoops. I think he's just worried that this build a beast is going to end <laughs> this game. Oh, purple snap picked that. What's the next? Oh, all of those are weak. You're telling me the Silverback Patriarch is weak? Yes. I would tell you that, Neil. The Silverback Patriarch is weak. Okay. We, Blizzard had to put, draw a card onto that card, and it still barely sees play. <laughs> still barely. It's called Stone Hill Defender. I was looking at you thinking, hang on, yeah. I'll get there in a minute. I think another issue with the play last turn is he's overloaded for quite a bit. I don't know if people can hear that or not, but you can. Dreamax <laughs> pretty exciting at this time of year. It's all oh, going on. Oh, no. He's got two glacial shards in the pool, but he can't, but he play, can't it. play it. He can't Hagatha either. Even if he rolls the taunt totem, it's not enough. He's just going to end the turn and say, you know what? Finish him. Finish him. <laughs> And Purple is going to take the set two to one over Shoebox. The Death Rattle Hunter. I believe Shoebox's next queue is going to be his own Death Rattle Hunter. Those mirror matches are interesting because, like, about one time in three, somebody just stomps the other guy. And the other two times in three, it can get really technical and awkward. I like the games where somebody gets stomped. Depends who it is. I like the games where I when stomp I'm stomp somebody. Yeah, great. that's great. Here, wear some eggs. <laughs> There's a five fives. I wonder how the King Mukla does in the mirror. Give your opponent uh, bananas to enable their eggs. Yeah, but it also gives you a five five to enable killing their face. <laughs> or killing so, their eggs. <laughs> killing their egg. Depends how quickly things get going, I guess. Keeping the tracking off the start. And lots of options here for Shoebox in terms of how much you want to do. I like just keeping the Terror Scale personally, but the cube's a big deal in this matchup. I match would up. consider keeping one of the cubes. I think keeping two is a bit overkill, but I definitely like keeping one of the cubes. Cube is, I would say, one of the most important yeah. cards in this matchup. But Purple has the most important card in the matchup, in my opinion, in his hand. Arena. Winter Wisp. Of Winterhood. How come Wisps in winter are like 6-6s, six but normally they're 1-1s? They're one -ones. Wait, what? Like normal Wisps are 1-1s, one -ones, but she's a Winter Wisp, and she's like 6-6. Six -six. How does that work? She's not a Wisp at all. She's a winter person. Wisp. It's Katharina. No, Wisps have names too. You compare Katharina to a Wisp? They have names too. They have families. All right. Zero-minute 1-1. One -one. What's it called? Bob. 
No. <laughs> you are very quick with Bob. <laughs> you are very quick with Bob, and uh, I don't think that Wisp's name is Bob. Quickly. Purple keeping his tracking. Basically, it's Vixen Mulligan. Takes the candle shot. You're not doing much on turn one anyway. Interesting. He's got the Hunter's Mark to back it up with. That's so. definitely why he took the candle shot, so he can stop any kind of early pressure. Ooh, and... And there could be some early pressure. <laughs> These eggs are going to explode all over the board here for Shoebox. It is going to look like scrambled eggs on breakfast. Shoebox is going to go coin Devil Sore Egg, and Purple is going to look at it and say, you know what, if you've got it, you've got it. And that is all the death rattle triggers. I mean, he's got so many that Shoebox has to be conscious of mind control tech. <laughs> My control will hit you for 20 if you take me. <laughs> I mean, Purple might just play it here to try and contest the Terra Scale Stalker. Yeah, this is interesting because he knows that stuff's going on in the hand. That Terra Scale was kept. But obviously, it could easily be Katharina Winter Wisp. It could be a cube. Uh, Purple's got kind of a read yeah. that it is something to either enable a death rattle or is something with a death rattle, probably. And yeah, he is going to start contesting early. And looking at his curve, it makes a lot of sense. Um, he's got things to do for three of the next five turns already, um, with power to add from the top of his deck. So if you're shoebox here, I definitely like the Terra Scale Stalker. It does get answered by a flanking strike, and it also dies technically on board. But you're going to be wow. more mana efficient with the play deads later on. So I like being the most mana efficient now. That way the playdads get more utilization later on. I, I don't... think I agree, but the reason he's looking is killing people with 10 attack on the board very rapidly ends a game before mana matters. So he's definitely got to pay it some attention to. You're not wrong. But Two Devil Swords is greater than one. My math teacher taught me that one. Yeah? Your math teacher played a lot of Hearthstone? No. Math teacher was just really into Devil Swords. Okay. I mean, Devil Swords are cool. They're terrifying. Look at that. I'm just looking at that egg right now. I seem to have this conversation a lot, but I think the Devil Swords are, like, kind of cute. You think that thing is cute right there? Yeah. Okay, I can see it. I was going to argue with it, but no, I can it's, see it's, it. It's kind of cute in a dinosaur-y kind of way. Looks like it reminds me of the Easter Bunny. Okay, now you think it's cuter than I do. I, I don't know why it reminds me of the Easter Bunny. It just because does. it's always alongside the eggs. Ah, okay. Yeah. A little egg hunt. Got him. I like the setup from Purple there. The hit onto the Devil Sword is very important. Allows him to not have to utilize the Hunter's Mark later on, so he can just put one of the three threes into the Devil Sword and just clean it up with the bow. So it's a very conscious hit on Purple's part. Despite the fact there's some obvious looking plays here for Shoebox, he, he's got so much going on in this hand. You know, spider bombs and play deads are things you can do. Um, but he is just going to do the more obvious stuff. Tempted to put that into the face, but got to control this board. It could get nasty. I would have much rather seen that gone to the face. Yeah. I don't think there was any real reason to not push it face. You kind of see what Purple was setting up for last turn. Uh, it doesn't really get punished by anything. You know Purple's going to go for that. The trade anyway. The trade anyway. And, and even if it did trade, I would have rather seen it go into the beast just for... Yeah. reasons <laughs> yeah just it doesn't matter but just for reasons the other thing that happens in this matchup is if you are the one with the eggs and the death rattles you are the one that runs out of stuff to do first so you have to make that early game count as it happens that might not happen in this game apart from the Katharina in purple's hand but usually you're the one who has to get it done with the five fives or you end up losing to the attrition Shoebox has a very clean play here with the Defender of Argus, can buff up both minions, push a little bit of face damage, and then can play dead again. I would have rather seen the play dead come out last turn. I don't see a reason that Shoebox is really holding on to this. I think Shoebox is just trading I, way too yeah, much. Yeah, definitely now. I That one needs to go into the face for sure. It doesn't even make the board any more clear, to be honest. The board's no. the same as it was a minute ago, except now you haven't done six damage. The only real reason to trade is if Shoebox has a read that Hunter's Mark is in the hand and really wants to play around it. But right now, Shoebox has missed 11 damage. Yeah. 11 damage right now would put Purple at 16 health, if my math is correct. And 16 health is 8 hero powers. There were other things he could do there as well. He could have Hunter's Mark one of these and traded the egg in, for instance, just to remove a thing. I don't think you need to, because they're going to go into your egg anyway, but... Purple hasn't got much for turn six. Obviously, you save it for the Grizzly.
but you've still got the spider bomb. Well, apart from the trading, though, I think Shoebox has managed to maintain concentration and. Mm. I get the impression he's playing at the top of his game, considering he's been shoved on stream in round one <laughs> of an event he probably came to to have a good time. Just hanging out with his buddies, saying, "Yeah, we're gonna have a good time at Dreamhack. Let's let's uh let's all sit together, at your stream, let's mate. All sit together, get let's over play there. Some Hearthstone. Let's go to our tables." And he's like, "Nope, you're coming with us." And by the way, you're playing purple. Oh, and by the way, you're playing purple. Who's right, in tryhard mode? On stream. Kind of. Get the chair. <laughs> get, get in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get in the chair. You'll think of us list. later. <laughs> and see, this is where, you know, if 11 more damage was pushed, 7 damage here, it ain't a hero power. There is no natural way to heal from the Hunter deck besides Deathstalker Rexar. And the hero powers will rack up, surprisingly. I know I was joking earlier about your 8 hero powers away, yeah. but realistically, if you can fit in a hero power every turn and you put them to like 4 hero power range, or even put them down to like 10 health. That is a very realistic goal that you can get there. Especially because they're gonna have to answer your board. Oh, please Shoebox, think about that first. I got a little nervous on that one. I think Shoebox did too. Yeah, it's interesting because modern Hearthstone tends to be a bit slower than the olden days in terms of how long a game takes. But we also have so many games being won by people finding an exact extra point of damage to just break the deadlock and just win a game from nowhere. I mean, Shoebox has ultimately missed about... A lot. 17 damage at least. So game. much that damage. And the hero power would be relevant if he had taken all that damage on. That said, we're, we're sort of talking as if he's losing this game. He has the same hand as Purple, plus four extra cards, plus a better board. He's doing just <laughs> fine with, with the damage he's missed. The one thing Purple will have going for him is he's going to be able to play that Katharina first. Yes. And as long as it doesn't pull King Mukla, <laughs> I think Purple will be happy. Even if it does pull King Mukla, it's fine. Yeah, King Devilsaur. King Devilsaur. Now, what, what would that card read? 5-5 um, five, five for 3. Give your opponent two... Devilsaur eggs. Devilsaur eggs. There you go. Done. But they cost zero mana, and they hit the board. Yeah, they're three zeros. And they both have played out on them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that sort of card, right? I would love that card. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just here. We go. Racks up, and I think that I think a lot of times that drives the difference in these mirror matches is just making sure to allocate damage appropriately. Oh, very much so. Yeah, something that. I think Saiyan was shown with his odd rogue is allocating damage in mirrors was absolutely huge throughout that massive streak he had. He'd do one damage like a 5-5 five five, and later on there'd be four damage materialized from nowhere. Exact lethals. And he's winning with exact lethals so often. Alright. Well, Shoebox. Alright, respond with your own Katharina. It's a Katharina duel. Duel Where's of the my, Winter Wisps. Where is my pet? There it is. Could opt to hit into the King Crush and then put the Spider Bomb in. Yeah. It will clean off the other King, uh, Katharina, but a lot of times, you know, it's going to pull King Mukla. And, and I also think you're fine with that. You've got the Hunter's Mark in hand, Candle Shot in play. Yeah, I think you're okay here. Oh, this is where it's a little sketchy because if this uh, Witchwood Grizzly comes out and there's a Cube Play Dead or a Cube Terra Scale on the other side, it could get pretty dicey. Fortunately for Shoebox, we can see that that is not the case. Shoebox is looking up pretty good right now. Doesn't even need to commit to the Hunter's Mark next turn. Could just, you know, play King Crush and get through the Witchwood Grizzly the hard way. And we'll go to game five if Shoebox wins this and Purple still has that Paladin waiting. So he won't be overly concerned right now, but obviously you never want to go to two all in a Hearthstone match if you can help it. Uh, no, Unless you're two one down. Thank you. You definitely want to end it as quickly. <laughs> you definitely want to end it as quickly as possible. If you're a Shoebox here, I like the idea of just playing out the largest minion in your hand and putting it into things like that Witchwood Grizzly. What do you think? Uh, seems good. Ooh, even the candle shot Don't phase. mind it, he's got the mana to play the second one. Why not sneaky point of damage? <laughs> one of the sneaky, sneaky point of damage. That's one of the 17 clawed back. <laughs> We're getting there eventually. 
Ooh, that's uh, Savannah Jaime. That is not a King Mukul. <laughs> that is a little bit better in this mirror. Yeah. Does hit the King Crush. All right, there's a little bit of hope for Purple left over. Yeah, he, he needs Rexar and he needs it, like, yesterday. I mean, look, Purple's been trying to deal with the board state the entire time, and Shoebox is at 15 life. Yeah. That goes to show you how much hero power damage just racks up over time. Yes, it's pretty incredible. That's what Thrall says, not what uh, Rexar says. Oh, talking to Rexar. Oh, speaking of incredible, um, I think we're going to game five. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be game five to me. We'll see a purple nod or something in a minute. Purple's emotions more interesting to predict than what's going to happen in this game four. I, I would agree. <laughs> Come get it. Uh, what's the beast? Tundra Rhino, snap! Yep. Quick. No time to think. We don't have time. And then something cheap. Uh, giant oh, Wasp is as poisonous. Yeah, that. And stealth. Yeah. High five, Rindle. We did it. And we did the high five. Don't For you those hear that of back you at home that did not uh, see it. It was awkward. I thought it was fine. I thought it was, it was, right. was a solid high five. It wasn't like, I wouldn't say it was in my top five high fives. It was like a high five out of ten. It's like a, on a scale of 27 to 37, I'd probably give it like a... An 18, 31, 21. Like yeah. a 31, yeah. That's a weird scale. What, the scale of 27 to 37? Yeah, because it's got 11 numbers in it. 1 to 10 only has well, 10. There, uh, there also is a scale of negative 5 to 5. Right. And that scale is very beneficial because you know how sometimes when you're using a 10 point scale, like you're saying, uh, it was yeah. a 5. You don't know whether that's like Average neutral or, or one below. Or, exactly. You ah. don't know if that's good or bad. So when you use a scale of negative 5 to 5 and you say it's a 0, you mean it was neutral. That's good. On my scale of 27 to 37, when I say it's a 31. So 32. <laughs> so you said it's bad. You blew it. As we do. Lumber our way into game number five there, in between high fives and joking around. And it is going to be Odd Mukla Paladin for Purple, which seems like it should do really well in this matchup to me. Shoebox has been very emotional too. He just keeps looking out. He wants something out there. I don't know what he wants. Round of applause. Bottle he's, of water. He's really trying to get the, the crowd going right now, and I don't blame him. They're going into game number five, Odd Paladin versus Death Rattle Hunter. And this is where, yeah, you're seeing the emotion from Shoebox now. This is where suddenly you go, oh, I might beat Purple on stream. So uh, you get, try and get the experience, enjoy myself, settle in, and then suddenly it's like, oh, this is now real. I actually stupidly got myself into a position where I might win. It always, it always felt good uh, being a... Uh, because obviously I've been referred to as the, the no-name. Uh, I was joking, I was joking. <laughs> it, I it, it, did feel good. So it, did, it did feel good when you uh, defeated a player of just high notoriety. Yeah. It, it always felt good. And then being a player of high notoriety, losing to someone who's not as well known in the scene, um, it can be frustrating at times, but you just have, kind of have to accept that, you know, a lot of there's a lot of undiscovered talent out there. I mean, people who come to a LAN and actively choose to enter a Hearthstone tournament are usually pretty good at Hearthstone. Yeah, we call them no names and all that, which is a little bit derogatory, but they're still obviously pretty good at Hearthstone, or they wouldn't go to a live gaming event to play a Hearthstone tournament. It's not the sort of effort you make if you're I don't terrible know, at something. There's some games I'm really bad at, and I might go to a live gaming event. Will yeah? Play them. Keleset. Like Hearthstone. Like Hearthstone. <laughs> Shoebox is really good at Kelly Seth. Yes, this is, I believe, the third Kelly Seth that we have seen from Shoebox. Ooh, into a Devil Sore Egg. Could Opti, you know, coin that out and then go for Prince Kelly Seth. Played it on the following turn. I really like that. No reason to coin out the uh, Prince Kelly Seth on now. two. No. Yeah. He's got no play for next turn. You exactly. just miss a turn. And then you waste mana rather than save it. Wasting mana is bad. Lorenda. It is, but it, it takes many that. forms. It's not an obvious way to mana to coin out Kelly It feels like you're saving mana because you're not wasting your one. Then you've got to realize... Your mana, use it when you need it. You waste... Two. Yeah. Coin's important too. We don't talk about that enough. Oh, the coin is very important. And it's getting more and more important when you choose to use that coin, I think, in modern Hearthstone. We see Purple there. He had the option to go Firefly, Blessing of Might, but it looks like Purple is going with a strategy of trying to... 
utilize the Blessing of Might later on to potentially take a trade into something like a Witchwood Grizzly to get through it. He's also got the Corridor else. Creep in hand, so the more the little more dudes he can make, the, the cheaper that's going to be wow. later. Purple is just laughing right now at the Prince Caliseth that just hit the board, and I don't blame him. It's the third one. Nope. That's a nice, nice little pickup, though. Makes the turn apparently easy, although nothing's obvious when it comes to purple. Yeah. With purple's game plan, I think he just kind of wants to go and be as aggressive as possible. The trade is a little interesting to me. I'm trying to think of what the trade could be referencing. I guess potentially mind control tech taking it. But a lot of times, they're going to have to make that trade for you. So there was definitely something on purple's mind with that trade. Maybe it was Zola. Yeah, I'm trying to work it out <laughs> it as well. <laughs> Because <laughs> you got the Zola earlier. I, I mean, mean candle shot bump just means that you lose your your minion for nothing. He knows there wasn't a candle shot on the first two turns. Yeah, so I was a little curious to the bump onto the minion. I, I didn't, I didn't quite like it, but I definitely like these hero powers every turn, especially with that level up in hand. Yeah. Right now, Shoebox has no way to answer it. Yeah, I mean, you're down to is. I mean, from where he sat, Defender Vargas is something, probably with a play dead and a coin involved at the same time. I think you have to. As awkward as this is, I mean, you kind of just have to put as much defense on the board as possible, especially when you know what's around the corner. You know Purple was setting up for this. This is a six Paladin level up on turn five, Neil. And there's no, yeah, it's turn five. Let it rip. Oh, yeah. but there's a Purifier's Maul. I still think you level up. Uh, the Purifier's Maul is just not good enough. Well. No. Yeah, don't <laughs> overthink it, Neil. I overthink everything, Jay. And I wouldn't be surprised if the rest of these just go face. Chad is full of why does that old guy overthink everything as we speak? <laughs> I think if you're purple, you just ship this all face. Imagine if that four damage had been pushed earlier. Be, what three off lethal right yeah. now? You're good on this number thing. I like numbers. Ah, never. Oh, and I. All right. So, if Shoebox goes for flanking strike and takes some trades, he is not technically dead. Yeah. He's gonna need to draw something like a Rexar afterwards. Yeah. This. Pain is going to continue from purple here. He's got zero mana corridor creepers and purifying walls and raid leaders. It is looking like purple's going to get there to me. I mean, Oddly enough, for a guy who played level up on six minions on turn five, he looks like he's going to get it done. To be honest, there was some merit for Shoebox to play the Hunter's Mark that turn in order to set up a Rexar play. But it looks like, you know, purple's even being determined enough to try and make sure that Rexar does not end his day at all. You're purple here. I have to imagine you push this face. I guess not. I, I think it's fair to trade into this, actually. I think maybe going it, base a little overzealous. Yeah, there's a world where your corridor creeper doesn't want a 5-2 hitting it, I guess, or... <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well played. Shoebox giving it up, and Purple gets it done, but not without a bit of a scare along the way. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a bit scary for Purple. He uh, he almost lost that game. That was uh, that was very close. That was